The oven is preheating to 325 degrees. I feel like meatloaf, macaroni, and cheese. Absolutely, time-honored classics. From the time you were knee-high to a grasshopper, you probably ran to your table for a heaping helping of meatloaf and macaroni and cheese. In preparing a meatloaf, I like to use a ground, round steak. You could also use ground beef or ground veal, and the quantity is two pounds. So with the beef already in the bowl, the next ingredient, spicy Portuguese sausage. And this is actually not, a, definitely not a beauty shot, but you just squeeze the sausage out of its container or its little tiny skin and it goes into the ground beef. Next ingredient is four tablespoons of ground horseradish. Now look at the horseradish root. It is not only very beautiful in texture, I think this is a really lovely woody texture, but it is also very fragrant. It's got a, a real smell to it and it also has a great bite to it. So in goes four tablespoons of fresh grated horseradish and also some color. So in goes four tablespoons of tomato paste. This is going to add as I mentioned, color, but more importantly, a really nice flavor to our meatloaf. Two teaspoons of salt go in, and then one teaspoon of fresh grated black pepper. So in go the hands. I've washed my hands already once, and definitely after I get done mixing up all of this great ingredient mixture of meatloaf, I'm gonna wash my hands one more time, and then we're gonna continue. I've already chopped up the next couple of ingredients. You need half a cup of chopped red bell peppers. You need half a cup of chopped white onion, a quarter cup of chopped celery, two tablespoons of chopped oregano, and two tablespoons of chopped thyme. Now, talking about thyme, if you haven't figured this out yet, this is like gonna be done in no time. Really simple and really easy to prepare. My hands are back in the bowl and I'm giving this meatloaf one final mixing. Now, this recipe is actually going to prepare two meatloafs, so I'm dividing the meat into two separate portions. So I'm gonna form this into a little loaf, and it's gonna go onto an ungreased baking pan. I find that preparing them on a baking sheet creates a nicer meatloaf because it allows the meat to reduce and all of the fat drains away. Final thing before we pop this into the oven for one hour of baking is to pour one cup of beef stock over top. Now as the meatloaf cooks over the next hour, I'll keep going back into the oven and baste the meatloaf and I may actually need to add a little bit more of the beef stock, but we'll have to see about that over the next hour. Cheese please. There's one thing I should mention about this 50s classic. The meatloaf is in for 60 minutes, the mac and cheese is 45, so that extra 15 minutes allows me to prepare this recipe. I've pre-boiled three cups of elbow macaroni, and now you can purchase all kinds of different colors and flavors, so experiment whenever you try this recipe. First ingredient is a quarter cup of grated Swiss cheese. Second one is a quarter cup of grated Canadian cheddar. Nice bite to it, it's gonna add a really lovely flavor. Third cheese is grated mozzarella. The last cheese is a smoked Gouda, and I really love the flavor of this cheese, so I'm just gonna grate it up. Another thing, too, is you could use Edam, you could use um, Chev, you can use virtually any cheese, experiment with different kinds, and uh, you'll be able to come up with some really great tastes. So that looks like about a quarter, actually it's about half a cup, and that's okay, because I really, again, love these cheese flavors. Take a wooden spoon and just give the macaroni and this cheese a really nice mix. Next thing we need to do is to prepare kind of like an egg wash. So I'm taking three eggs and just going to put them into a mixing bowl. One, do I hear two, three eggs. And you also want to add into this a half a teaspoon of paprika plus a quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of chopped Italian parsley. And you can go ahead and chop a little bit more of the Italian parsley because it always makes a nice garnish once you take the macaroni out of the oven. Okay, in goes one cup of homogenized milk. That goes in, and again, just give the whole mixture a nice quick whisk. Make sure it's well blended. That's looking pretty good. I need to grease the dish in which I'm gonna bake it. So this is a, an attractive 
specimen right here that I like. So I'm taking a little bit of butter and I'm going to grease this dish, get it nice and coated so that macaroni and cheese won't stick to it. This is so quick. In goes the macaroni mixture. Look at that cheese. It's so beautiful. Make sure you get every single little one of these guys in there. Level it off a little bit and make sure that it's nicely distributed in the dish. And then take the egg wash and simply pour it over the top of the macaroni and cheese. And try to make sure that you get a little bit of this everywhere. Looks really nice. Now the final thing before you place it into the oven is going to be a bit of a dusting on top of a quarter cup of grated Parmesan, a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, and a pinch of white pepper. I like to use the white pepper because you don't see it, but it sure gives it a nice flavor. Now same thing, into a 325 degree oven with the meatloaf. In 45 minutes, we're having dinner, a 50s dinner. You take the meatloaf out, gonna serve it up, then it's mac and cheese. You better twist and shout, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Hey, meatloaf, mac and cheese, timeless classics with a modern twist.